Greetings, greetings, market rebels. Welcome to this week's sector situation. I'm going to dive right into it. I did do a little bit of prep um, late on Friday and over the week, earlier parts of the weekend, and a little bit here this morning, but I thought I would maybe just keep it fresh and just dive right in. It is Sunday, January 29th. It's a little bit after 2 p.m. here on the East Coast. Again, I'm Wayne. My partner, Ryan, I think is on his way back from Let's see, on his way back from the slopes in, in Vermont to his home in New Jersey, or he's uh, already working on stuff and just hasn't contacted me yet. But Market Outlook should be out later today or tonight, and we'll take a look at our trusty disclaimer, and then we will get into the intellectual property rights notice. I'd ask everyone to take a look at that, please. And then let's switch over from here to minimize that. And let's minimize that. Let's get this showing here. Where is that at? All right. It is there. Okay, we're looking at this screen now with the market rebellion charting up here. And so this is a little different. I do this most of the time in macro measure, but I'm doing it this week in sector situation. I just want you all to know where we've gotten to for sure, right? If you're like, oh, I, I do my own macro work or I feel like this about the market. Just note that these percent of stocks above these simple moving averages have gotten up to levels that are fairly high. And this has produced pullbacks or it often does produce the pullback, right? So it has for us since we started recording videos, uh, but just in general, it, it usually does. You usually get a big pullback once you get a little too extended on these. Uh, this is also exhibiting signs of trying to convert to more of a bull market mode. I think the biggest one for that is this 200 day percentage of stocks above the 200 day. But just do realize that, you know, they could take this out and that could ultimately be a good thing in the long run, but probably something that's indicative of being overdone in the short run. So it's one of those little paradoxical things about technical analysis. And there's other ones as well. But that is what I would ask you to keep in mind, along with things like this. You're not in extreme greed. And this is not a perfect measure by any means, I don't think, but right, that you're getting up there. Here's what it looks like on a timeline. You're getting up there, right? So you're somewhere near prior highs. So just be careful because we have seen a little back, we've seen where the market's backed up or swooned after that. There's an alternative measure here that puts things in either greed or uh, extreme greed, which is an alternative approach. I don't want to vouch for this or anything like that. I'm just saying that it's it's out there. So just be cognizant of that, even though we're talking sector situation here. Um, I do I just want to remind everyone about this too, this too, it, this this third year, just this other little tidbit before we get into the charts. But this third year in the presidential cycle, the year before the next presidential election, this is the strongest of nearly double the next best one, which is the fourth year. And that goes back to about 95 years. So I don't have the most updated data, but I just wanted to show you what this looks like. And so uh, it's pretty strong. Uh, so far, we are we started following that, right? We've been covering this probably for about a month or so, somewhere around there, give or take a week. Uh, but I just want to, again, not I'm not big on this. Ha this has to be an absolute analog to this or, hey, this has to happen. A lot of this stuff to me sort of doesn't make sense, but at the same time does make a little sense. But I don't think we're I don't think we're prisoners of this type of seasonality or cyclicality. I just think that it's something that's interesting to look at. And so far, you know, bursting out of the gates as this market has, uh, it seems to be following this to this point. It's still we're only a month into the year, so you know, there's plenty of time for this to this to fall apart potentially. So we'll we'll see, but. Just a little bit of a macro measure share there because want to make sure everyone sees that. And also, I thought we'd start out here on XLY and look at that in XLP because we've been noting, right, that it doesn't make a lot of sense to us, right, at least me, but that how, how are they coming in? Now, granted, a lot of these stocks were really beaten down, but are they really thinking that the economy's uh, not going to suffer? It's turned the corner and everything seems like it's legitimately on its way back and it's discretionary spending's going to really pick up from here. I, they may be right. That may be what they're thinking. Maybe they just thought it was a trade. But the reality is, and this is why it helps to do what we do every week, 
reality is, is we've noticed this has started to happen, right? So this isn't really catching us off guard because we're, we see that. And this really fits with being more risk on, right? The market kind of moving to that more risk on posture that we've talked about. And we noted that a lot of the risk on sectors have started to perk up over the last kind of month and a half. And then uh, the risk off sectors have, which were doing well, the defensive sectors, they have backed off. And so staples would be one of those, right? Where this is a good thing to keep your eye on. A lot of folks, I think, historically have liked to look at this to kind of say like, what, okay, what's the, what mode does the market think we're in? You know, what, what mode does the, does the market think the economic cycle is about to start kicking in again? You can see that these had their day, like I said, about six weeks ago, they topped out and the staples have been really rolling over pretty, pretty harshly, right? Uh, ever since. And when you stop and think about how well the market's done, but that, that's why the sector work I think is important because you might say, well, I like a company like this or that, but if, if the group isn't being treated well and it's kind of being left behind, it just happens to be a time where a lot of probably institutional money just isn't flowing in there. You might be right about the company and maybe, maybe you've got great research behind you, you've done yourself, but if the stock isn't stocks chart and the sector chart usually aren't predisposed to want to participate, then you could be in early and kind of frustrated for a while while a lot of other things are moving. And that, I guess, you'd have to label as opportunity costs, right? So if that's opportunity cost, you know, that's something we don't want. We want to be able to take as many advantage of as many opportunities as we want. And that's just something to think about, you know, in terms of why we even bother with sector work. Uh, well, th I think that's one good reason there. Now, Having said that, if I can find find the chart, it would be nice if I could. I want to really jump over to here, and this should be XLE. I might have mistyped, but I wanted to give us the main grid view on the S and P sectors. This is the twelve symbol grid that I keep up um, flash usually almost every week in sector situation, and I just want you to see right. XLV, I want to start out with, look at the RSI and XLV. on the, These are all on the daily chart. But look at that, right? That was really doing so well. And the reason, again, more of a defensive sector topped out about six weeks ago and has not been a good place to stash your, your long side money, right? But you can see that communications started to put in a higher low and they started to come roaring back. They eclipsed, I think, a pretty significant resistance line there. And they're a little too vertical. A lot of this, in fact, I think you could see, this is a really good way to just see where things are quickly. Go get that RSI label for yourself. I know it's available in Rebel Pit. You could find it on the internet somewhere. But find an RSI label and be, build yourself a little grid. And you'll be able to see how things, the state of things, not in depth, of course, but very quickly get a sense of, wow, is that overbought or oversold? But you can see that tech is on its way closing in on 70 to being overbought. This XLE has been a little bit of an enigma where you haven't been able to get that push that a lot of us thought could start. I've continued to think ever since it broke out from this that consolidation that it had going there, I thought it would start to possibly come back up, challenge the highs, and maybe it still will, but it's been very crafty. It's been cagey. It's been tough to really say, yeah, this this trend has reignited. I'm still waiting for the big long side UOA to show up in many, many energy stocks to tell us that there's another leg and we're about to bust through. Hopefully that'll happen sooner rather than later because that'll make for some great trading for UOA players. But um, I know Pete is still constructive on this too from the last, last comments I heard from him. Uh, but again, over communications have gone haywire, you know, double secret haywire, Wally World haywire at this point. 75 almost on that RSI on the daily. So again, how does this help us? Well, can you still play the long side? Yes, you can. But would you do it in a really smart way and realizing you're not early where you'd say, well, I'm going to put a little bit in here. I'm looking for maybe like a little bit more of momentum burst. I'm going to be an aggressive roller, an aggressive trimmer. That's how you have to handle things, in my opinion, in situations like that where you're not early to the party, but rather late. Look, these XLF has been another one that's been tough. Let me try to give us a little bit more of a view here on that one. But that is has a higher low put in now. 
and it is launching a breakout attempt or on the verge of launching a breakout attempt and still has some room to run before it gets overbought. So if they manage to just uh, take the Fed and this week's earnings in stride and keep going with this rally, which could, again, could be a bull trap, they manage to do that. Uh, this looks primed to go a little bit further. You know, probably it's not a big mover, but it's always better in my mind when the transports, which look similar right now, right? They're on the verge of doing that and they have a, but they have a higher RSI reading. They also look pretty good to do that and, and go. But I would be, I'd be, I'd be very, very, very much on the edge of my seat saying, look, I've got to guard my profits here on the long side because this is not early stage upside movement. This is latter stage upside movement. For now, right in the short term trend. And if I get a good quick burst out of here, I'm going to take most of my money off the table and I'll let a little bit stay in with, an, with a roll. But I'm not going to try to, where was I, right? When it was happening, where was I when it was down here? This is where I should have been more aggressive, not when it gets up here. It's never too late to buy or sell. That's an old Wall Street expression. And it is true. But Right. I still always feel better when I'm snagging something that's coming off of a still kind of with a higher low in place and market breadth improving. And right, I'm coming out of a little mini consolidation and I've probably taken some of the I'm probably really low on the RSI at that point. I'd rather buy then, you know, almost without question. Uh, XLV defensive sector. Right. It's been suffering after performing in a stellar fashion there. Uh, leading up towards the end of the year. As we noted, staples continue to kind of make their move lower while discretionary kind of do, doing better and better. And it made a new high, but notice the 71 reading, right? That's up there already. So it wouldn't surprise me. I covered this in macro measure. I think you got to be really careful. Real estate, again, in a lot of people's minds, mine included, 66 on the RSI breaking out. Doesn't make sense to me. But again, I don't care about my macro take. I don't care about the reading I did, the news I read. What I care about in the short run, especially, is is how do I how do I profit from this? How do I how can I be smart about it? And being smart about it, I think, has been to trade this sort of surge in the market that is not in all that uncommon, right? We saw some major rallies in 2022 inside of a bear market, and that's just the nature of it. So. This happens from time to time, and you can do very well by, I think, flipping around, knowing that really you're ready to become a bear at some point again in a big way, but you have to just bide your time. 60 on the basic materials, but they are near the highs, similar to XLI, the industrials. They're, they corrected a little more because I think they have not been able to, uh, they had, have not been able to uh, do so much. If you look at the way the math would work out, they've been sort of flatlining in a way above, above and below the current level. So that's going to give you that kind of middling reading in your RSI. But uh, this was this just launched, I think, from a higher level and had a little bit more volatility than we did here uh, in terms of the way the price would be measured. But regardless, both of them do have room if they want to push. And of course, XLU is just kind of there just to see how it's very defensive, interest rate sensitive situation would be treated. They've been out of favor because people have not been so worried about protecting playing defense, right? It's become more of a risk on situation. And because it's been risk on, um, they, you know, this is not drawing the bid and folks are, I guess, cashing out to some degree in there. So that's the look at our quick look at our grid. We looked at these a little bit in depth. What I'd like to do is go back to my chart and again, I'm sorry. I've, you know, I take, believe it or not, I kind of like turn things off uh, just before I look at a lot of things on this chart. But I need to have a few things here to at least be able to make some, I think, comments that may help. Uh, without anything on there, it would just be me creating slides and reading them. And that would be even more boring. But this one here, let's take a look at SMH. Um, right. This is another thing where you're like, well, wait a minute, is are things really roaring? But maybe, you know, maybe they are and we just don't realize it. Right. Maybe we just haven't this data that I've seen, Ryan's seen, maybe we're lagging. I don't know. I don't think so, but maybe that's the case. Regardless, right, this has been acting really well 
Uh, this is a little bit extended. You can see we're at 67 on the RSI up here. I've added that label here for everyone. So you've got to be cautious because again, right? I always use the same cheesy analogies, but are you early to the party or late? Right. And I think like this is really where this back here is really where unfortunately UOA appeared, you know, back in these days. But coming out of that kind of correcting back down, putting in the higher low versus these lows, and then seeing UOA and then rounding back up and then taking out resistance here, right on this big candle here on the whatever that is, the one sixth. Yeah, that's that's your 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 cue to like okay we this might try to pop up to the 200 in purple then what's next well it's these levels up in here which it got to then what's next it's this high then what's next is closing this gap if there i think there may be a gap back there i no i'm not sure why no that's not a gap i usually leave ovals for gaps or circles for gaps but um uh, it might have just been that to acknowledge that there was a gap closure there after after like about a week or so. But the point is, you just keep going, 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 and now you're now that you're looking at targeting these. So my way of looking at it would be: look, this is there's some really good technical things happening here, right? That people like to see. Uh, mainly, your short term SMAs and your 50 are now all upsloping. Uh, they have a positive slope. The 150 even has a positive slope. The 100 has a slope. Even the 200 may have turned the corner, right? And might have, it's at least neutral-ish, uh, but might have, might have turned the corner a little bit. So things are just surely looking better there. But I think that this run has been pretty long, strong. And with the Fed looming, with big earnings looming, right? It wouldn't be crazy if they pushed this a little bit further, a couple more percent, like I've been saying, then you get some corrective action. So could we be in the midst of seeing a bull trap? I think we can. We could be in the long run. Again, I'm not predicting that. I'm saying I just feel that that's definitely possible. Um, and I also feel as though they could really convince more people if they take out just a few more highs, people will say, man, this is really taking out highs. We're really switching back to bull. And that would really, of course, lure people in. And then what you could get is this really kind of crescendo where the tech earnings, they love them, they react positively to them, whatever the Fed says, they find a way to act positively, everything looks wonderful. And then you finally do get corrective action after it's all over starting next week, and then maybe lasting for a while. Just one scenario I've been thinking about, but overall, right, you're not early to this party. Can you trade the long side? Absolutely, you can. Just be very careful, be a diligent trimmer, be a diligent roller, you know, don't get your, don't get, let them, if you do catch a nice further burst in there, don't let them take the money back from you. So that's one we look at besides the main grid of 12. Here's XHB. Again, I say the same thing every week, but I've got to, which doesn't make sense to me, but look, this housing, this housing sector has come back strong. I do think it's overdone. It's not quite at 70 on the RSI, but it's getting up there. And if you go back to a time like this, you were at 70, you were right near the 200. They're above everything now, and they've got everything really upsloping as well. So this is really strong, bullish stuff that would convince a lot of people, I think, that it's over. It's all over. And it may be, it may be that it is. I can't say that, that it's not. I just don't. That's not the sense that I have still to this point. But again, we trade the chart. We don't trade what we think with our macro econ take. Uh, that's all background information for me that helps me switch the polarity of what I'm trying to do when, at the right technical time, hopefully. Um, but And it helps me manage my risk because I'm a diligent risk manager knowing that I don't buy into what Wall Street's selling me. But the charts price has the final say. And it does look like you could either write double top here Let's talk about scenarios. You can double top. You're outside of your Bollinger Bands. You're quite up, up there on 65 on the RSI. There's no rule that says you have to get to 70. So you could double top here and come back off, or they could burst it through and, again, create more of a bull trap, take out more highs, get more and more people thinking, you know, hey, this is wonderful. And then after that crescendo of uh, bullish euphoria, then they run into trouble, right? And then you start giving some back. So that's the other big sector. We'd also look at XAU as one of them, one of the sectors that you know is represented fairly well. Be careful here, right? I think I've been, you know, I've been 
more constructive on this and haven't wanted to be in it's still working because i i really bought silver and gold uh several months ago physical but uh i'm hoping to buy more at cheaper levels than when i was buying it in here <laughs> so i'm hoping that this thing really corrects uh really corrects but i don't know i mean look what they did here here's this they exceeded this high which is pretty pretty big stuff to get all the way back to there, exceed that high. It looks like they might have closed this gap, and they did. And there's not a lot left in its way, but it's certainly gotten up there. It, it's pulled back a little the last couple of days. That's good. Probably would use the 20 SMA there, right? That blue line is coming up, or you draw your own support line. But is that in need of a breather? Yeah, I think it is. Is it kind of getting extended? Has it had a hell of a run? All those things. So don't be surprised with a little bit of negative divergence down here on your RSI, right? Higher high versus here, lower high, and then rolling over. Don't be surprised if this cracks a little bit. Now, this is a notoriously difficult sector to trade in. And there's a lot of, not only is there a lot of hyper manipulation that's a proven fact, all you need to do is check the news on the big firms manipulating gold and silver, especially JP Morgan, but it's also, subject to other interesting developments from time to time and central banks and all kinds of stuff. So this is kind of like the intrigue area of the stock market, if you ask me. Um, but so, yeah, you, there's a lot to look into there if you're new and it's not easy, but, you know, at times there's some really good opportunities. And I, again, I look at it more as a hedge. So with that, what I'd like to do is cover just a few more things, one of which would be to look at the crude what do we got here cl is this what's this going to give us no it doesn't like that one and i'm trying to think of why it's not flashing more out oh, i might have skipped right over it. it might have been my own fault so there's march come on and this is again oh a thicker swim did the old switcheroo on me and got me back onto percentages this happens so frequently i just don't know why though so anyway uh you can see this struggled at the 100 there right that white line what dash white line that serves as the spine or the middle of my uh my bollinger band arrangement but um you know it, let, let's see what happens if it doesn't support at the 50 you have to figure it's on its way back down if it holds there starts to come back up right that would be showing you a little resistance i mean resilience but you know, we've been waiting for this thing to start to do better. It's done a little bit better, and the XLE has been doing okay, but it just hasn't really given you that strong, I'm leaving consolidation move, let's go. Now, this could be a slight pullback, which would be better than these deeper pullbacks from this level, right? You can see there's been an, like a more shallow pullback, a couple deeper pullbacks from the same level recently. That's a pretty big level. It's no joke. But if it can get through there and go, then we're finally going to see a chance for this to take off and probably work its way up somewhat. I would say 10% would be realistic, uh, which means eclipsing the 150 even. So that would be a realistic move, I think, uh, up to about 10% higher from here. If this does set up sort of a base camp above those SMAs and then works its way and breaks out above that horizontal line, let's call it, uh, I don't know, 82 It's just to be safe. But is it overbought? No, it's, it's everything on that RSI is either mid middle of the road or actually lower towards 30. So it has corrected enough. If it wants to go, it'll be leaving, it'll be leaving where it's at, at a, at a level that's, uh, nowhere near overbought right on the in on the heavy duty intraday charts and i, I always like to see that neutral neutral on on daily and then fine on the four like cheap on the two and four hour not a bad situation in, in uh if it if it leaves from there you should get, have the chance to get to still get a solid push uh let's see now let's take a look at a couple other commodities we'll take a look at lumber and let's look at March. Let's see if it gives us this. So we've been noting this, right? This kind of dovetails with housing. Uh, you know, there's no denying that this and also copper, which we've been noting for a while, they've both been 
doing a little bit better. So this is usually a good sign, economic sign that lumber's in demand, copper's coming back in demand, a little bit maybe overdone, maybe in need of a little bit of a pullback maybe uh, in copper, but they both are trying to really change trend at the moment. And again, that sort of fits with uh, the way the market's viewing things, the fact that discretionary is outperforming staples, the fact that housing and real estate are bouncing back, um, and so on and so forth. So at least it all, in a way, makes sense. And it, and it makes sense that it's all acting that way. It's sort of a feedback loop. I still, again, I'm skeptical of the, that things are legitimately better, but they are flashing that way and we we've been taking note of that and we haven't been fighting it so that would probably be the best plot spot to stop at uh i could probably look flash the dxy here instead of macro measure and maybe tnx and vix and then we'll wrap up on that but uh the dollar you can see it just it's it's really luckily for us right that we we kind of noted how outrageous it was back here on multiple time frames even the monthly was super uh, overbought on that at that point. So luckily in this area, we were not caught off guard by that. That was one of the best things because uh, you could never rule out that it keeps going, but it's always good to know when things get really overdone because this is a big mover, right? This this changes so many things that how how the dollar is behaving. So I'm not not going to chart the levels here. But it's getting down there on it's getting down there on the RSI, but it still hasn't it hasn't gotten out of its own way. You can see it's below the twenty there in per, late late blue. So as long as it remains below there, I, I would just keep thinking it drops. But at some point, right, it probably will overcorrect. We'll have to try to keep an eye out for that, and then hopefully see some improving technicals. Interest rate yields yields on the ten year. Um, I should say uh, interest rates yields on the ten year, not interest rate yields. But uh, bond yields would be a better way to put it. But basically, here's your 10-year, right? This was a this was a real thorn in the side of the market last year to a certain point. You could see that mid Jan, I'm sorry, mid October is when the market started to bottom. The stock started to bottom, I think, on the 13th, and this popped up a little bit higher. But the market hung in there. This has been really shifting to an intermediate-term downtrend ever since. And it's middle of the road now on RSI. Uh, this so it probably still in some ways has more on super big picture charts. Probably could correct more lower. Uh, so wouldn't rule that out. The intermediate term is, trend is down. The, the uh, it's it's broken. I think the the uptrend. So this is probably a good thing for bulls. Clearly, right? With if the yields come down, that's that's a good thing. So um, that's what's been happening. Uh, I would be on guard. Keep your eye on the 50. That would be the first sign that, hey, maybe they're trying to reverse this thing. Maybe there's a demand for some reason. Um, and then otherwise, right, a break below that low from last week right there on the 25th takes you probably down to the 200 day. Now, I know we're not charting the security and it's kind of a weird thing, but, you know, there's this is this is basically derived right from security. So, uh it, it's chartable, I guess, to a great extent that way. Finally, last thing we'll take a look at is the VIX, and we'll wrap it up. VIX, when we had a 17 handle at one point, right on Friday. So that was probably the lowest you've seen. We've been noting this. This is the lowest that you've been. Now you've got to go back to here. You've got to go back to the early days of 2022 to get back to this level. But yeah, this thing, um, and there's no there's no signs of anything yet, right? So there's really no signs of anything yet. Could it possibly have a little mini double bottom in the works? For sure, right? With the Fed, with the Fed looming the way that it is, and hope springing eternal maybe for bears, and maybe they're hoping that a big dog like Apple really puts in some news that uh, puts out some news that's not very very encouraging. Yeah, maybe, right? So that that's something maybe to watch there is if it holds around here and then tries to work its way back up. Very hard to chart the VIX that way though. It's, you know, it is what it is. It's hard to say, yeah, this is like sort of like a stock. It's it's tough to really say that since it's really more of a range trader, you know, nearly all the time. So it's a little bit different of an animal, but 
Um, that would be the only thing I could really note there. Otherwise, right, uh, you know what happens if <laughs> if the Fed just doesn't have a problem with this rally, only goes 0.25, and then the plans only go 0.25 and pause. That's pretty much the bull scenario. The only thing I could add on that to think about is if the bulls got got sorry, if the bulls get everything they want, and they've got they've gotten everything they want to that point. Had, did they front run all that and build all that good news into price in the market already? Or is there more upside? You know, in other words, would you get a sell on news even after they get what they want? Because so much of it's already been baked in with this move we've seen. That's a good question. I don't know the answer to. I think it's a possibility, though. So that may be one more burst and then they do a little bit of a rug pull. We'll see, though. Um, again, check out macro measure if you want to see some what we do in some other ways in the indices. But uh right now right a lot of a lot of uncertainty is, is surrounds us right and i think you just need to be really nimble even more nimble than usual because remember right th th this is a big time fed meeting and you've got these big earnings and really these guys are the masters of uh you know the masters of using news to justify their market movement right uh, their market manipulation so this is a super emotionally charged time with the Fed, big tech earnings, and then that, you know, bear market downtrend line that's just still right in our vicinity that we closed above uh, for a few days. So this is this is no time to decide to dart out and have a chicken salad sandwich with a friend that you haven't seen in a while. You know, I would I would be by my computer pretty diligently all week long to manage stuff or just you can neutralize a lot of your risk and not worry about it and then just once we get through this potentially volatile time then just reestablish uh, however you'd like but just if you're planning on trading through it just be super nimble and be ready to react um and uh i think that'll that'll definitely benefit you and not guessing and betting right will be will benefit you just kind of playing it smart when there's this kind of uncertainty lurking around the corner. So hope something to share with you helps you out this week or in the future. And I'll be in touch through all the various ways, including webinars, et cetera. Everyone have a great finish to their weekend and a great upcoming week. Thank you.